Hey guys, so this is Yanni. He's another associate over here at Field and Stream and was just talking to him about those things right, right there. To me, I mean, like I, like I said, I'm not that uh, proficient in these types of weapons. So I, I thought those were shotguns, but actually, what is that, Yanni? Oh, these are 338 Lapuas. 338 Lapuas, the king of sniper rifles is what you said, right? Yeah, it's sniper rifle round is one of the best ones out there. So how does that defer to like if you had a 50 cal or something like that as a sniper? Isn't doesn't the 50 cal have a lot more penetrating action than a Lapua would? It definitely does. When it comes down to ballistic coefficients, most people prefer 330 Lapua more than anything else. What that that um the guy uh, Bradley Cooper who played uh, you know uh, Overwatch in uh, American Sniper. Yeah. What kind of rifle was he using? Was that a Lapua as well? I believe. It was. I can't be completely sure I didn't completely watch it. It almost oh. makes sense that it would be because if he was the he was the king of snipers back then, you know what I mean? For Overwatch, that definitely wasn't a 50 caliber. No. 50 cal is good for long distance if you really want to reach out that far, far mile. That weight carries all the way through. You have a lot of powder to get out there. But versatility-wise, 50 BMG has a nice solid push. 330 Lapua, in the signal, if I'm wrong, has a more of a sharper kick. It should be a roughly at least three times as strong as a grand wind mag, at least the kick wise, at least the feel of it. Look at that one there, the American flag. Would that be Cerakote? That it would be Cerakote. You are right. That is nice. So that's a that's an that's a that's a premium price there. Obviously, fifteen hundred bucks, but it just looks gorgeous. Yeah. This is all um, made by Savage, who used to be owned by Vista Outdoor, if I'm not mistaken, a long time ago, and then it went Vista. separate. But I believe the one that you're looking at at the moment, at least the camo one, mm -hmm. the American flag is actually a Howa. So it's Legacy Sports. Oh yeah? So it's a, probably an entry level composition rifle. It has a Nico Sterling scope. So it's pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff, huh? It is. It's pretty decent stuff. It handles itself very well. All these rifles that are displayed here shoot 338? No. The only ones that shoot 338 is this guy over here, the Ruger, and our Savage. How about the others then? The other ones, like you asked. So, this one, if I'm correct, 6.5 Creed, oh. 6.5 Creed, 6.5 Creed, Creed more as well. Same thing over here, 6.5 Creed, Creed 308 in the Gen 2, and you have the Gen 3s on top, 6.5 PRC, and you have the 338 local on top once again. Let me ask you this, the 308, if you mistakenly put a 762 by 51 in there, it would shoot? It would, however, uh, it depends on... There's a lot of misnomenclature, there's a lot of confusion between them. Because you can get 762 by 51 and it will definitely feed 308 without any issues. Because it's more like a 556, you have a 556 rifle, it takes you to three, slightly bigger diameter, more pressure, so of course it would definitely take a lower pressure round. With newer rifles that take 308, it's okay to shoot 762 by 51 NATO. It's not recommended because you're putting more wear and God forbid if the gun's not made properly. You could damage the gun on yourself. I see. But yes, you can definitely shoot it. It just has different pressures. So if it's chambered in 308, you're pretty much okay to shoot a 762 by 51. But if it's chambered in the 762 by 51, you can shoot 308 without any issues. Without any issues. Right. That's but interesting. You kind of want to say NATO, so that way you don't have to worry about the possibility of something happening. So if you have a chambered 308, let's say sniper rifle, you shouldn't. You could. But you shouldn't shoot 7.62 no. by 51 on a regular basis. You definitely shouldn't, especially if it's a precision rifle. They're designed to be only 308, not higher pressure than that, like 6 point, or 7.62 by 51 NATO. So kind of want to stick with the 308. Gotcha. Next question I have for you, Yanni, is uh, I've always been interested in my fourth weapon as probably a shotgun. Okay. Now, I don't... I'm not really thinking about a pump action with a pistol grip type shotgun. So we're talking about semis now. I kind of want like an AR platform semi-automatic type uh, shotgun. Mm. However, my question for you is, does that also apply to the safe act? Or do I have to get a Thorsten stock for that? And, and Believe it or not, you may actually have to get a Thorsten stock for that by, correct me if I'm wrong, once again, the New York safe act, you can't have anything that's pistol grip, attachable mag, and a threaded barrel in the same sentence. Correct. So technically speaking, you can get a shack in the semi-auto with a pistol grip, so long as it's not detachable mags. So if you got an AR style detachable mag, since semi-auto, yes, technically you can if you put a Thorsten stock, because it wouldn't really violate it. 
but of course i don't even think thorson makes those stocks for shotguns you know i don't yeah. think they do but definitely check on the laws because you guys never know and i don't want to get you guys in trouble because it has to do with legal matters of course 100 percent. so and, and i'm not a lawyer just no, as a disclaimer <laughs> neither am i <laughs> so you definitely want to check your laws, check your county laws, check your town laws, just to make sure that you're sitting kosher and you're sitting in a pretty nice situation, you know. You want to get, and if you guys know the answers to my question, because we're not really too sure, and even though I thought I was pretty well versed in uh, New York State compliance, getting a semi-automatic shotgun on an AR platform, honestly, I've searched everywhere. I can't find anybody in the state of New York that has one that's New York State compliant because I've never seen a Thorson stock on a shotgun before, and uh, I, I know it has to be 18 inches in barrel length for it to be legal. Uh, no, actually, it has, just has to be, at least with federal regulations, it can't exceed or can go, go below 26 inches if you're doing like subcompact yeah. or you're trying to break into the other category. Right, no, if I wanted a detachable mag, which is the reason why I don't want one of these, I don't want the pump action, I just want a detachable mag like an AR thing, but um, I, I don't want to have to, I mean look, have you ever seen a fin grip, you know, the shark fin grip on a shotgun? I've never seen it. I've, I've never seen, seen a, time. oh have you? I have, but it was just an oddball gun, it was yeah. really weird. But, that being said, you can definitely get a semi-auto gun, have it completely tapped out, looking all the way you need it to, look, and just have everything you want, cake, have your cake needed to. But just be aware, there may not be, you know, certain parts out there just to make sure that it fits your shotgun. Yeah, no, I would be very cautious with that because again, I mean, I think even, even the fin grips, right? People say that that's legal in California, but not so much legal in the state of New York even though a lot of gun shops do sell uh, AR platforms with the fin grip, you know, the fin, shark fin. Yep. Uh, so It's kind of like a, you know, so a gray area. explain that, that one I do know. So when it comes down to pistol grips, it's categorized as getting your thumb around the grip itself. So that's why they have the shark fin over there. So you can't get your thumb around. So technically speaking, you can get a Chris Vector, the carbine length that has like the 16 inch barrels I think they're making as that shark in the back so you can't grab it completely. So when you're shooting, you're shooting it just with your finger in the front, you're not even grabbing it all the way in the back. For me, that's not a problem. For you guys, that might be a little bit of an issue. Oh, 100%, but the thing about it is, in the state of New York, right? right. When you have the, see, I'm thinking that it's a borderline legal grip for the state of New York. Oh, yeah. California, they're cool with it, right? Yeah. But think about it. The shark fin grip actually has your thumb on the other side. So that right. should completely comply with the way the SAFE right. Act is so written. It kind of removes that ability for that pistol grip to be considered a pistol grip. So just like a Chris Vector, if you guys ever held Chris Vector, ever shot him, you'll know what I'm talking about. You have the grip and you have the mag in the front. Technically speaking, you're already breaking the contract of New York SAFE Act. Yeah. So how do they go around this? Well, you don't get your thumb around it. The shark grip so that's why we think that it should be okay, but it. Yeah. But we're not. We're not the ATF. We're. No, we're we not. don't. We're not lawyers. We don't know 100. percent What would you say the most uh, safe, featureless grip there is for AR uh, rifles here in the state of New York? Well, besides the Thorsten being the best one, I would. I would agree with you that the Thorsten is the best yeah, one. That shark grip is a really good idea because it won't get your thumb around it, and you would be pretty safe saying that it is okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep your pistol grip and you want to have a mag and you want to have all the bells and whistles. So long as you just follow the law, you should be able to put a compliant mag in there, which is like a comp mag, for example. Now, comp mags are, most people don't like them. <laughs> I kind of don't mind them. Oh, really? Right, because you don't have to really drill them, you don't have to do too much problems with them. You put them in, a touch, I believe they have like a little screw that goes onto the actual pin set, or it sits on the actual lower receiver. My friend has had nothing but problems with this comp mag. He's never even shot it once. <laughs> but those are, but that's good information though. Thank you, bro. So there you go. That was a very interesting interview with uh, Yanni over at uh, Field and Stream. Uh, the other guy that I interviewed a while back, Anthony, he was there too. Uh, those guys are all very knowledgeable in terms of New York State compliance, but you know, we really didn't get an answer definitively about you know New York State compliance and shotguns. You know. So if you guys know, leave it in the comments for me. But for now, that, ex that uh, ammunition was way too expensive for me. I'm not gonna buy it at those prices. So thanks to Yanni for that uh, interview over at Field and Stream. Um, 
there's a part of the New York State Safe Act on the bottom where it says ban does not apply to pistol grip shotguns. So I kind of want to know what that means, you know what I mean? Because the AR type platform shotgun semi-automatic that I, you know, kind of am interested in has a pistol grip. So if the pistol grip does not apply, that ban does not apply to the pistol grip, then could I have it, you know? I'm really not too sure. Because honestly, if you guys look around the internet, do you see any New York State compliant semi-automatic AR platform shotguns out there? I haven't seen any pictures of any with any, for, uh, you know, uh, shark fin grips on it. I haven't seen a Thorsten stop that's made for shotguns. I haven't seen anything like that, you know? So, kind of makes me wonder, you know? And I've done a lot of research on it. Uh, I don't really know anybody in New York State that has an auto a semi-automatic AR platform shotgun. You know, I would like, you know, to in the future get one, but if I gotta change the grip and the stock and all that stuff, I may have to wait until I move to a free state. <laughs> anyway, that's my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers, Blowers, and Guns. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station. Here on the East Coast, as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture, and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.